man when he saw that he was healed he was cleansed he turned back and with a loud voice glorified god in verse 16 verse 16 says and he fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. A Samaritan. The other people, they were Jews, and this one is Samaritan. And we're told the Samaritans had nothing to do with the Gentiles. But lepers don't make any difference. The Samaritan leper, the Jewish leper, the ten of them, they were together. Together in leprosy, together in beseeching the Lord, and together in asking for the mercy of God. And Jesus did not make any difference. The Samaritan and the Jews lepers, he cleansed all of them. But it's the Samaritan that came back and Jesus said, look at verse 17. In verse 17, Jesus said, Son, what they are not ten lepers cleansed, but where are the nine? In verse 18, there are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. And then in verse 19, he tells us, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made be whole. Today, your faith will make you whole. In Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 2, Matthew chapter 11, verse 2, now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, verse 3, and said unto him, As thou he that shall come, or do we look for another? John wanted to know, are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Are you that high priest of the new covenant that will be different from all the high priests of the Old Testament? Are you the one to come? Now, how will Christ tell him, I am the Christ? I'm the one to come. Don't look for another. This is the Christ that can cleanse us. This is the Christ that can heal us. This is the Christ that will turn our lives around. This is the Christ that will make us clean and pure, ready for heaven. Look at the answer in verse 4. In verse 4, you see, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. What do we hear? What do we see? Verse 5. In verse 5, it says, The blind receive their sight. Check up in the Old Testament. What do you find anything like that common as is common now with Christ? And the lame will check up in the Old Covenant and the lepers are cleansed. The lepers are cleansed. And the dead hear and the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Those credentials, the credentials of the Messiah, they show that this is the one to come. And in particular, the lepers that have not been cleansed in the old covenant, they are now being cleansed from day to day. Go tell John, and I will know that this is the Christ we have been expecting. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Look at number 2 here. Number 2, the purity through Christ after cleansing from lawlessness. He cleanses us from lawlessness. He tells us in 1 John chapter 3, reading from verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. He claims.
cleansing sea salts so that we'll be as clean as he is. He sets us free so that we'll be as free as the one that sets us free. He makes us upright so that our lives will be as upright as the one that makes us upright. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. He'll make you pure. He'll make you clean. And he'll make you ready for heaven in Jesus' name. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 15, verse 9, it says, And he put no difference between us and them, between the Samaritan and the Jews, between one leper and another leper, between the Gentile and the Jew between us and the apostles. He makes no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. He will do it today. Look at number three. Number three here is the purpose of Christ in cleansing without limits. Cleansing without limits. No matter how long the leprosy has been there, the sin has been there, no matter where the sin is, in the heart, in the habit, in the hand, in the life, no matter how polluted and defiled we have been, he can cleanse us. He will cleanse us and he will do it by some power in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men. It's talking to us who are fighting in our nature. And we have the defilement of violence in our nature. And then we come to him and he removes the cleansing source from that violent attitude and violent disposition and violent habit. And now we can follow peace with all men. Amen. And holiness, and holiness, even the word, the word is pure. Holiness, think about it. Holiness, that word has been cleansed from every pollution. They don't use that word in the world. It's the word for the kingdom. It's a word coming from Christ and coming to the redeemed. And he gives us the holiness. He gives us the purity. He gives us the cleansing. For no peace with all men. And holiness, holiness at home. And holiness in the office. And holiness in the church. Holiness in our heart. Holiness in our mind. Holiness in everything that we do. Holiness in every action. Holiness by experience. And holiness in every practical way. Holiness in our thoughts, holiness unto God, and holiness before men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And he is only one, the leper that is not wholesome, the leper that is not healthy, the leper that will communicate and uh, spread leprosy, he will not be in the house. He will not be in amidst the people of the children of God, but when he's cleansed and is made whole, and every stain and every spot and every appearance of the leprosy is gone, now he can come into the commonwealth of Israel when all our sins are gone from the heart, from the hand, from the habit, from everything that we do, from our language, from our dressing, all the sins are gone and he makes us holy and we can now follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord when the rapture takes place, you will be among the people that will go up. When the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them, you will be among the number. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it says, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly 
fear. That godly fear means reverence. We ought not God, we reverence God, and we're conscious of God everywhere we go. Now the grace of God has come into our lives. We're cleansed, and now, without any limits, without any limitation, now we can know that when he comes, we will be with him in Jesus' name. He'll cleanse every leprosy, every defilement, every impurity, every iniquity will take away the cleansing blood of the land will come upon us and you'll be able to say we we'll praise the Lord Jesus for the power in his cleansing blood. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. You must pray before you go. You must not carry away any leprosy of sin, any defilement of sin, any iniquity. Don't carry anything away. Let's come to the Lord. What the old covenant could not do, the new covenant now has provided for us, and it will cleanse you from every defilement in Jesus' name. Please open your mouth and pray and receive abundant grace before you leave today. Let's really pray. We have heard the word. Holiness is not a word that comes from the world, but from the kingdom. For sanctified power will come today. The fullness of his blessing. Let it come upon us as we pray and as we abide in his presence. Talk to the Lord. Let the fullness of the blessing, let the completeness of the experience. Like Jacob, you are saying, I will not go, I will not let you go until you bless me. You receive the salvation, but then you wait because there's more to receive from the Lord. The Adamic nature needs to be removed. The body of sin needs to collapse completely. The love of God needs to expand and, ex and extend, and your faith needs to grow until when the power comes from above in Pentecostal measure so that our lives will be completely turned around. We're in the presence of the Lord today. There's cleansing power in the blood of Christ, our high priest. When we look up to him, he will not disappoint. He has never disappointed. His blood is still as efficacious, is still as fresh, is still as powerful. The blood that cannot lose its power. And that is the blood of Christ. And as the servant of the Lord, our Father and the Lord preached to us this morning, the prophet is not going to follow those details, go and bring this uh, turtle dove, go and bring this, go to the running water. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. We have moved beyond the era of the powerless priests who have no power to cleanse. No power to cleanse no man. We're not looking up to Jesus. He also and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised all the shame, made everything just perfect, is the king of kings, is the high priest, and it's also the Messiah, combining three key offices that you cannot find anywhere in the Old Testament. We're not just coming to church, 
the cleansing is not going to come from just church. Yes, attending church is good. It is going to come from the Lord. And if you are outside the camp, outside the congregation of the righteous, because the spiritual leprosy has excluded you, and you have been put in isolation somewhere, and you have no ability to cleanse yourself, but you know there's only one fountain, there's only one savior, there's only one sacrifice, there's only one high priest, there's only one mediator between God and man. And you come to him today and you say, rock of ages, clear for me, let me hide myself in thee. It's not the labor of my hands, it's not the work of my hands, the work of a leper cannot be appreciated. The work of a leper cannot prosper. The works of the hands of a spiritual leprous person cannot be acceptable in the sight of God. And that's why when we come to the, the presence of God, we look up with the eyes of faith. We look at that Calvary, we look at the sacrifice that was made, we look at the completeness of that sacrifice, we look at the fullness of, of that sacrifice. And we say we are looking up to, up to you. We repent of all our sins. And we move beyond remorse because of the consequence of the sin. But then we are serious, we are genuine, with tears coming out of our eyes. And we say, Lord, we want that drop of blood upon our hearts again to bring about the sanctifying power. And we must wait for that experience before we can escape from bitterness. Like that little maid, she's not going to think this is what they did to me. They took me away from my father, my dad, and my mom. They took me away from our land. They must have destroyed our house right now. I will not give them any information. Of course, when the salvation comes, forgiveness follows. Forgiveness for those who have offended you. Like our Lord and Master said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We cannot move, we cannot make progress until we are forgiving those who have offended us. We put it away from our minds. That's how our words can be believable. That's how our, the gospel can be true in our life. And the words we speak will be unassailable. Because we have a, a foundation, our feet resting upon the truth of the word of God. Our vision then will be compelling. And our voice will be convincing. And as we are preaching that gospel the same way we were saved, giving it wholly without changing anything. We will not change the word of God like Naaman who and see the prophet is going to see a king. We must go to the direction the Holy Spirit is leading us. Pride will take us nowhere. In fact, if that pride is still in the heart, it's a confirmation that we are not yet saved. If there's anger, bitterness, hatred, animosity, malice, and we still carry the gospel, the Lord did not ask us to preach the gospel of malice. It is the gospel of the Messiah. And as we are taking that gospel, we are doing the right thing, we are saying the right thing, we are going to the right direction. And if we discover that there's still something there, it's as if you are watching the worst version of yourself. You, the standard you set for yourself, you are disappointing yourself. And then you come, you say, pride is there. 
We cannot move with this pride. We cannot get to heaven with us. We cannot be in the kingdom. We can only be in isolation. And to come out of that isolation, like Naaman, we must come down from the horse and get into the, into the river. Because the, the fountain is still open. It's not too late yet. We carry the gospel convincingly. We carry the gospel conscientiously. We carry the gospel with a lot of responsibility. And we do it the way Christ did it. We have seen the example also in our Father and the Lord. The way he's doing it, the way God is helping him, the way God is expanding this gospel through him, like father, like son, like father, like daughter, the same way we shall do. And when we have the privilege of ministry to God's people, we preach the whole gospel. We're not going to teach people about water, bring water to church, bring this. It is not the river Jordan that is going to save. It's not by water. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And that's how we have the promised performance. There be power behind that word that we are speaking. When we get to River Jordan, just like Neymar, he was given the word seven for perfection. Not three times, not four times. We go on until everything is fulfilled according to scriptures. And no matter what is going on, no matter the body in our hearts, there's going to be instantaneous cleansing, immediate cleansing. And the expectation is that nobody will live here today the same way he or she came. That all sins must be dropped. Everything that has been making the journey so burdensome, Everything we drop it at the foot of Christ. Instantaneous. Jesus, Jesus just says something. I will be thou clean and, we, and the leper is cleansed. Because as you look up, you look up in faith. And you are believing the one that said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You are believing the one that says, Look up to him and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth. You are believing the one that says, By faith, Repentance towards God and faith towards, towards our, our Lord Jesus Christ. That the one who said that he will do it, the one who said it is finished, the one who said I am the way, the truth, and the life, the one who said with me nothing shall be impossible. And that gives you a lot of assurance that as he has said, so he will do. And as we leave here this morning, we have it in our hearts that the Lord has done it. We are living with that assurance. We are living with that belief that God has done it. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God who are no longer under the limitation of the Old Testament, I said in Jesus' name we pray. The people that have received the power that receive the, the confirmation to the prayers that have been praying. I said, in Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. Our Father, we thank you so much. Today you have highlighted so clearly that holiness is not a, a public word that the unbelievers are speaking over there. But holiness is the word that belongs to the kingdom, the kingdom of people who are now submissive to the master, the kingdom of people who can now be controlled by the rules and regulations of heaven, the kingdom of people that have been completely transformed, purified, purged from everything, worldliness, pride, hatred, animosity, malice, and everything, the kingdom of those who are purged from the sins of the, of the flesh. Oh God, as we look up to you as a church today, 
we look up with the eyes of faith. And we know you will not disappoint us. If you didn't disappoint, if there was no discrimination, that Nema, a Syrian, can come in and get that kind of miracle, we will get a miracle today. If the power of the goats, of, of the blood of the bulls and goats, cleansing to the covering of their sins in the Old Testament, under this New Testament, the sins will not just be covered, it will be cleansed completely. And then we are going to move forward and, and, and get everything, the whole, the whole blessing, the full benefit that we get from the altar of God. Nobody will miss it today in Jesus' name. And if we have been looking up to God and waiting on him and praying and desiring and expecting that sanctifying power, O oh God of heaven, let that sanctification come upon us today in Jesus' name. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He says that, that, that by the time we, we, we follow him to the point of sanctification, the walls of Jericho, the walls of sin will fall down. And then we are now moved to Jordan. And then out of our belly shall flow the rivers of living waters. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost will come down. And just like as our Father and the Lord is doing it here, we shall do it over there. It speaks to somebody who is sick, the person rises up. As a prophet, he's not going to, he's not going to re recommend all those Old Testament, the dead works of the Old Testament, the dead ceremonies of the Old Testament. Now we are standing with our two feet upon the confirmed word of God. And when we say it is finished, it is finished. When we say you are cleansed, you are cleansed. When we say you are delivered, you are delivered. Let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that our Father and the Lord, his, his singular desire is that the words that he has spoken and that the word that God has given to him, to this church, and that we are following it. Father, help us to keep following it. That's how his joy is going to be full. When he shall hear about our affairs, both in Nigeria and in other states and other countries and other continents, that this same word that has come to them today, that this same word has been coming for about 50 years now, that we are ready to obey it, that is how his joy shall be full. And Father, we pray that his joy shall be full in Jesus' name. His labor over us shall not be in vain. His investment over all these years, his sacrifice and his prayer, it shall not be in vain in Jesus' name. But the result, the ground that I've taken in all this water shall produce fruit. We will be fruitful. We will be strong. We will be faithful. We will be holy. We will be sincere. We will be strong. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as we are living here today, it is done. It is confirmed. Thank you, Father. We ask for more strength upon him. So that the next time you come, physically, spiritually, every aspect of his life shall be completely renewed. And then when we go to Bumosho, and the word of God is coming from there, it will come with a greater power. It will produce greater converts. It will produce greater signs and wonders. And that's how the GCK will be going and going and going with exponential increase. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we believe you have answered all these prayers. In Jesus' name we pray.
we pray. I read from Psalms 116. I read verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? Is for thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from folly. In verse 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and we call upon the name of the Lord. I want to lift up our voice this morning as we call upon the Lord, worship him, magnify his name for all his benefits toward us. He has delivered our soul from death, our eyes from tears, and our feet from folly. Let's lift up our voice as we worship the Lord for all his benefit toward us. For his preservation, his protection, let's magnify the Lord for his presence, for his power. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles, who want to appreciate God, who forgiveth all our iniquities. Let's magnify the name of the Lord for the forgiveness of all our sins. We are saved by grace. All iniquities have been forgiven. We are made righteous through faith in, in Christ. Let's thank God for the blessing of sonship. For as many as received him to then give you power to become sons of God. What a privilege. What an opportunity to become sons and daughters of God. Who, for, who healeth all thy diseases? He is our healer. Let's magnify the name of the Lord for healing all our sicknesses and diseases. Let's magnify the Lord for redeeming our life from destruction. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, will have been destroyed. But for the Lord, we are kept by the power of God. Let's magnify the Lord for his keeping power. Who crowned us with his loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies our mouth with good things, so that our youth is renewed by the eagles. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to bless the Lord for his faithfulness in saving souls, in healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, in through GCK. We want to bless the Lord for confirming his word through GCK. Let's open our mouth and bless the Lord. Thousands of souls have been saved. The Lord confirmed his word as the gospel is preached globally. Want to thank the Lord 
for confirming his word by saving souls, by healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, spectacular miracles from time to time that Lord confirm his word. Let's magnify his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Today, we have come before the Lord. In Psalm 63, I read from verse 1. Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee, my flesh longed for thee. In the dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. So, as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. While I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. We are here this morning, and we want to call upon the Lord. We want to see his power and his glory in this place today. Shall we lift up our voice unto the Lord? That today we will see his power. We will see his glory in this sanctuary. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord. As we have come to seek the Lord this morning, we we'll see his power, we we'll see his glory in this sanctuary. Everyone present this morning, the sinner will experience God's visitation today. They'll be convicted of their sins, and there'll be genuine repentance. Those sorted between two opinions, this day they will come to a point of decision to follow the Lord. Believer this morning will be strengthened. Believer this morning will be efficient, empowered, a new strength. Everyone present today who will see the Lord in his glory, in his power. Mighty visitation. Glorious visitation this very day. A new encounter with the Lord. A new experience. Desire to please the Lord, to walk with God. To know him more. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray this morning and tell the Lord that the Lord will give us a new experience. The Lord will do something unusual, unforgettable in our every life to bring God closer to him, nearer to him, in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to God. We'll begin a new walk with God. Desire to know him more. Hunger and thirst for the Lord. That I may know him, that we may know him, and the power of his resurrection. Want to know him more. In Jesus' name we pray. I read Psalm 118, verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. The gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. Want to pray? The Lord will open to us this day. Gates of righteousness, and we shall go in into them in Jesus' name. 
Open your mouth and pray. The Lord will open unto us the gates of righteousness. And we'll go in. We will possess the righteousness of the Lord. This worship service today, the Lord will open unto the gates of righteousness. And we'll go in. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to pray for all our ministers. In Psalm 104, verse 4. Who make it his angel spirit, and who make it his angel spirit, his ministers, a flaming fire. We want to pray this morning that the Lord will make all our ministers a flaming fire. They will minister in the power of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord will envelop all our ministers in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouth and pray. All our ministers, all our study school teachers, all our ministers, choir members, all our ministers, those ministering in the Austrian department, the college department, in the media, all our ministers. The Lord will envelop them with his power. The Lord will speak through them. The Lord will minister through them. The hand of the Lord be mighty upon our minister this morning. The power of God will envelop them. In Jesus' name we pray. Prayer for our Father and the Lord. This morning, as the man of God, who mourn the pulpit, he will speak as never before. The word of his mouth is a word of power, and it will penetrate into every heart and life in Jesus' name. And this day, through his ministration, our lives will never remain the same. Let's open our mouth and pray. We minister in the power of the Holy Ghost. Fresh anointing, power from one eye. We minister lives. And everyone present this morning, young and old, will be mightily blessed of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you this morning for this worship service. We thank you for your presence is here with us. Lord, I pray, more than what we have asked, you will do for us in Jesus' name. As you continue, you continue with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. As we remain standing, we shall sing from our continental hymns and song in 39, 39. power in the blood. Will you be free from your burdens of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you over evil the victory win? There's power. There's wonderful power in the blood. Will you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to cover each side. There's wonderful power in the blood. Will you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Since things are lost in its life-giving flow, there's wonderful power in the blood. Will you do service for Jesus, your king? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Will you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, wonderful walking power. The blood of the lamb, there's power, power, wonderful walking power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. <laughs>
único shall we pray. A gracious Father and our Lord, we bless your name, we worship you, we appreciate you, mighty God, because of what you have done for us. And your son has purchased for us on the cross at Calvary. Precious, wonderful blood of Jesus that cleanses, that purges, that renews, and that redeems. Father, we pray today it will work in every life in Jesus' name. Father, give us understanding as we start your word this morning in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are welcome to start the scripture preaching this morning in Jesus' name. Last week, in our start the scripture teaching, we had our study in study 69. And it, the topic was thundering law or predication. And that it was in the chapter, the book of Le Leviticus, chapter, chapters 11 to 12. God instructed Moses to give the law of clean and unclean animals and purification rites for the unclean to the children of Israel. The purpose of dietary prohibitions and demand for external cleansing of Israel were both sanitary and spiritual as well. God wanted them to be special people whose life, relationship, and worship were regulated by the laws of God. In Leviticus chapter 44, in chapter 11, verse 44, the word of God says, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourself, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And uh, the instruction here concerning the, the clean and unclean were given, number one, for health reasons. And number two, to help the children of Israel remain people separated from the ungodly society that were surrounded uh, then. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 20, we see what the instruction of the Lord given to us as New Testament believers. As Christians, today, we must separate ourselves from the surrounding society, either by eating, drinking, and in dressing, so as to glorify God in our bodies. By the grace of God, God will help all of us. We we'll always glorify God in everything we do in Jesus' name. Today's study is in Lesson 70, and uh, that's the volume 2 of our New Study Scripture booklet. The topic is Identification and Cleansing of Leprosy. And uh, memory first is in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 6. Can we have anybody from the from my front here that will refer, that re recite the memory first for us? And the priest shall look on him again on the seventh day, and uh, the, and he shall uh, and behold, if the plague be darkened, somewhat darkened, and the plague, and the plague spread not in the skin. The priest shall pronounce him clean, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. Leviticus chapter 13, now verse 6. Well, thank you. Thank you for a very good prayer. Let's, shall we open our Bible to Leviticus chapter 13, and I read, we read together in verse 6, after the count of two. One, two, go. The seventh day, and behold, if the plague is somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scalp, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 6. We want a first reader from uh, the youth. Okay, thank you, our sister. I will be calling on to you. Read from chapter 1. I mean, chapter 13, from verse 1 through to 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, 
when a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scarf, or a bright spot, and it shall be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then it shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague in the skin of his flesh, and when the air in the plague is turned white, and the plague in the side be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in the sides be not deeper than the skin, and the air thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut off him that has the plague seven days, and the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and behold, if the plague in his side be at the stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him off seven days more, and the priest shall look on him again the seventh day, and behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean, but it is but his cap, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. Go ahead to verse 8. But if the plague cast spread much abroad in the skin, after that he has been seen of the priest for his cleansing, it shall be seen of the priest again. And then the priest shall, if, and if the priest see that, be all the scabs spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. Go to verse 14. But when rough flesh appeareth in him, it shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the rough flesh and pronounce him to be unclean. For the rough flesh is unclean, it is a leprosy. Or if the rough flesh turn again and be changed unto white, it shall come unto the priest. And the priest shall see him and behold. Go, go to verse 20, no, verse 19 to 22. And the place of the boy there be a white rising or a bright spot, white and somewhat reddish, and it shall be shown to the priest. And if when the priest see it, it's behold, it be in the sight lower than the skin, and the air thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the boy. And But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spreadeth much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. Thank you very much. We will be reading as we continue in the teaching. Today, we, we have the study, Identification and Cleansing of Leprosy. Our lesson is taken from the book of Leviticus, chapter 13 through to 15. It centers on identification and cleansing of leprosy with emphasis on laws of diagnosis of leprosy, chapter 13 and chapter 14 go together. Each chapter is introduced by the phrase, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 1, and also chapter 14, verse 1 and 33. The chapter closed with the phrase, this is the law of leprosy. In Leviticus chapter 13, verse 59, this is the law of the plague of leprosy. In a garment of woolen or linen, either in the warp or woof or anything of skin, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. In chapter 14, in verse 57, the Bible says to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. These laws show the high premium that God places on health and cleanliness of his people. That was why he commanded that the individual under consideration, that is, the leper, be, quarant be quarantined, that is, incarcerated until he was cured of his disease. In Exodus chapter 26 and uh, chapter 15 and in verse 26, the Bible says, and said, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. In 3 John, in verse 2, New Testament believers, we see what God has provided for us there. Third John, third John in verse 2, the Bible says, the Lord is telling us through Apostle Paul, Behold, I wish above all things. That, Apostle John, Behold, I wish above all things, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. This is the will of God, as revealed to us by Apostle John the Beloved. The individual under consideration, was to be brought unto Aaron the priest, and if indeed infected, it was to be pronounced unclean. In our text, Leviticus chapter 13, and uh, in verse 2 to 3, 
the word of God revealed unto all. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 2 and 3. When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a sky, or bright spot, and he be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron, the priest, or unto one of his sons, the priest, in verse 3, and the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the air in the plague is turned white, and plague inside is deeper, be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. Verse 4, if the brass spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and inside be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut up that shall shut him that had the plague seven days. It will be for a time. And uh, we see here the individual under uh, a man pronounced unclean by the priest, then began a terrible separation. For he would dwell alone without the camp that is in leper's colony, who will not be allowed in the camp, neither in the community. Dwelling alone was actually a living death. He was cut off from spiritual fellowship with the covenant people, and in a real sense, he will be without hope and without God in the, in the world. Leprosy is a disease that affects skin texture. It affects color and it affects sensitivity. Leprosy, in the real sense, symbolizes sin. I have it work in man. Leprosy is contagious. So sin is equally contagious. And the effects of leprosy is devastating. So also it the effect of sin. And that is why the word of God is warning all that there is need for us to live a separated life. Sin is very destructive. It leads to eternal separation from God. In the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 18, I read in first four, Ezekiel chapter 18, it tells us in first four, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son. is mine. The soul that sinneth, he shall die. In John chapter 1, verse 29, the word of God tells all, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and there is blood. Blood that cleanses, blood of Jesus that washes whiter than snow. Today, the question we want to ask is the question one. Why did God command that leprosy should be drastically dealt with? Why? Anybody, can anybody from here give us the answer? It's okay, because, my brother dear. It's because God cares about the health of his people and also the cleanliness of his Thank you health. very much. We have this study on that three subheading. Point number one, loss of diagnosis and quarantine of lepers. Number two, Laws for the cleansing of lepers and leprosy in houses. Number three, laws for cleansing from other forms of defilement. We look at point number one. In our text, we have read it in Leviticus chapter 13 from verse 1 through to 3. To all men, the leper was a living lesson, portraying sin, of which death was the penalty. Leper was a symbol of sin, showing that he was not only lost, lost and ruined because of what he had done, but on account of what he was, sinner must not only confess what he had done, but also admit that there is no righteousness in him. In Psalm 51, David, by the Spirit of God, revealed unto all, Behold, in chapter 51, verse 5, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin, did my mother conceive me? In Leviticus chapter 13, from verse 1 to 3, there were details given to the priest to observe in the victims, in the victim to ensure accurate diagnosis in order to prevent error in judgment. Number one, what are those things? Some of the symptoms are number one, white rising of the skin, white hair, rough flesh. We see this in verse 2. Verse 10, verse 14 through to 15. Number two, thin white scales or scars 
on the body like layers of snow. That is in verse 2. And then number 3, bright spots, white and somewhat reddish. We see this in verse 2 and verse 19. Skin, number 4, skin depressed. White here in the spot that we see in verse 3, verse 20 to 22 of Leviticus chapter 13. And then number 5, hot burning raw flesh, spreading white bright spot, somewhat reddish. Somewhat reddish, white here. We see this in verse 24 through to 24. And uh, number 6, spreading this fall in the skin. White yellowish tint here. That is in verses 29 through to 34. Number 7, white reddish saw. In verse 42 to verse 44. If the priests were this so detailed, in their priesthood office, there are lessons for Christian leaders and believers today to learn. What are these lessons? Number one, Christian leaders have the responsibility of keeping the congregation pure and preserved from any pollution or sin. Number two, leaders must be impartial in exercising their duty. Sin must never be excused among members in the church. All believers are priests today. That is, New Testament believers, we are priests today. That's what we have seen in the word of God. First Peter in chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, as I read in verse 9. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show for, show for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. We are priests, brothers and sisters, believers, we are priests. We need to therefore examine our lives and make sure we are free from the leprosy of sin and afterward watch over all our fellow believers. Uncleanness is equated with whatever did not accord with God's will and holiness. Question two. Compare the rules of the priests in identifying leprosy with that of Christian leaders today. Anybody from that side or the prophet? Okay, let that hands up there. Praise the Lord. We look at uh, in the old time, now we, as a Christian, we, we, we have to separate any of the, the believers or any of the brethren that live in sin. We separate them from among the brethren so that they will not pollute or send other believers from committing sin. Thank you, my brother. The following lessons on how leprosy appears on a person are noteworthy. Number one, it will arise spontaneously on the skin. Believers should therefore watch. Watch out, lest sin arises in our heart. Watch your heart. The word of God tells us in Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews in chapter 3 and in verse 12. He says, take heed. Brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Number two, leprosy will appear in the skin. Where a boil or bone has been killed, we should be careful to avoid the danger of nursing past offenses or minor misunderstanding, which may provide a fertile breeding ground for sin in the church. Number three, we should forgive and forget whatever way we might have been wrong. The word of God tells us in Matthew Gospel in chapter 18, verse 35. It tells us in verse 35, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if he from heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. I pray God will give us the heart to understand the mind of the Lord and have a forgiving spirit in Jesus' name. Once these priests have confirmed a case of leprosy, leper will be promptly be quarantined. That we see in the book of Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45. It says, and the leper in whom the plague is is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bear, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, unclean, unclean. And uh, the leper was required to rent his clothes, shave his head, and put a covering upon his upper lip. This is the signs of deep mourning. 
or a great calamity among the Jews in those days. The leper could live in company of others lepers, but not in the, com in the community of healthy people. Anytime the leper will come into the city, as they have read, he should cry unclean severally as he approached the city so people could avoid contact with him. What a terrible picture of sin and the sinner's condition. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the word of God says, For the wages of sin is death for the end. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, For the end of those sins is death. The end of sinfulness is death. And uh, there are several similarities between leprosy and sin. Can we point out those similarities between sin and leprosy? Any member of the choir? Similarity between sin and leprosy. Anybody there? Okay. We see, number one, we see leprosy is repulsive. Leper were unclean, and so are sinners before God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 6, we say, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as vigilant. And we all, we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Number two, leprosy begins in, in an insignificant way, but later its, its effect is so disastrous. In the same way, sin may seem little, but it is the little forces that spoil the vine. And our spiritual vines have tender grace that we see in the book of Songs of Solomon in chapter 2, verse 15. Number three, leprosy is progressive and diffusive. Though it begins in a very small way, it spreads until it consumes the entire body like a little leaven that leaves the leavened the whole lump. Number four, leprosy causes loss of sensitivity. Lepers do not feel pain. They do not feel cold. They do not feel heat because the skin being the sense organ for detecting the stimuli has already become norm. Similarly, sin deadens the conscience and leads to loss of spiritual sensitivity. The sinner, unless awakened by grace, can neither hear the alarm nor perceive any danger to his soul. To his soul. I pray today, sinner that are hearing the word of God here today will arise and come to the waiting father, waiting for him. Number five, leprosy separated his victim from the congregation of Israel. Sin also separates man from God, both now and in eternity. Question. Point out this, where we have done that, and then we go to point number two, laws for cleansing of lepers and leprosy in houses. In Leviticus chapter 14, and in first, in first one, open your Bible with me to Leviticus chapter 14, as I read, here from verse 1. The word of God tells us, Leviticus chapter 14, verse 1, it says in verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper. In, in the day of his cleansing, he shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look. And behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for to take for him that is to be cleansed two bells, two balls also and also and clean and, and cedar wood the scarlet and hiso. We read to verse eight. We see the instruction God gave unto Moses. God instructed the children of Israel and on the purification rite of cleansing the. The confirmed leper. God wanted them to understand that though leprosy was incurable by human effort and that the leper was as good as dead, there was still hope for the leper. There is still hope for sinners today. There is also hope for sinners today as they come to Jesus, the slain lamb that takes away sins of the whole world. Question number four. What lesson was the law of purification from leprosy intended to teach? What lesson from this side? What lesson do we learn from that? Anybody? Okay, that, that brother in the front. 
can see that there's hope for sinners today. They repent of their sins and accept the Lord as uh, their Savior. Thank you very much. God directed Moses on what to do. When the leper, leprosy had disappeared, the priest should go out of the camp to meet and examine him in order to confirm that he was truly healed. The man could not go to the priest because he remained unclean and barren from the community until the priest declared otherwise. When the, when the priest confirmed that the leprosy had been truly healed, he would proceed with the purification rite. This consisted of two ceremonies, one outside the camp and the other at the court of the tabernacle. With an interval of seven days between them, the procedure was designed to achieve different ends. The ceremony outside the cave was designed to restore the cleansed man to the civil society. Well, the ceremony at the tabernacle was for its restoration to religious fellowship and worship in the sanctuary. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 8, from verse 2 through to 4, the word of God tells us in verse 2, And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou, tell no man, but go thy way. Go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer the gifts that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Question 5. Explain the two ceremonies that constitute the purification of lepers in Israel and their purposes. Any hands there? Okay. Let me pass. The two ceremonies, one was done outside the outside the uh, outside tabernacle, one in the tabernacle. The one outside the tabernacle is to reconcile the leper with the social community and then the one inside the tabernacle was to restore the leper back to what Thank you very much. Leviticus chapter 14 verse 18. Leviticus chapter 14 verse 18. The word of God says, and the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. If the humankind did not have sin, atonement, atonement will be unnecessary. We thank God for the love of Christ, for the love of the Father that he had given us his only begotten son to redeem us, from, redeem the whole world from the sin that we have committed. Uh, for number three, laws for cleansing from other forms of defilement. Laws for cleansing from other forms of defilement. In Leviticus chapter 14, and I read in verse 33, Leviticus chapter 14, verse 33, it tells us in verse 33, Leviticus chapter 14, verse 33, and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession. And he that owned the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth me, that as it were a plague in the house. Uh, if you read from in chapter, you realize uh, from, that from the passage we have read, here we see the concern of God over the physical health and well-being of his people. The people around them did not know anything about hygiene, they don't know anything about sanitation, the importance of washing and the prevention of infection, infectious disease. God pointed out to the children of Israel that defilement will arrive from secretion that, that issue from human body. This may be a disease, flaws, or a normal discharge that is associated with the reproductive system. According to this law, a person could be defiled by reason of a running issue, emission of semen, the normal menstrual flow in women, intercourse between a man and a woman, or unusual flow of blood in women. In every such case, the individual was required to wash himself or herself at the end of their period of uncleanness. Anyone who had contact with the defiled person 
or any of his objects became defiled and in need of purification. I pray the Lord will help all of us. We'll examine ourselves, examine your heart, check up your spiritual state. And I pray the Lord will help us to remain clean, ready for the rapture in Jesus' name. A question before we pray, what is our position in the New Testament dispensation concerning ceremonial laws? What's our position? Any, uh, okay, my brother there, quickly. We are no longer subject to ceremonial laws because our Lord Jesus Christ has set us free. Thank you. We need to remember that under the New Testament dispensation, we are no longer subject to ceremonial law. Jesus has set us free by fulfilling for us the demands of this law. However, we can still benefit from the principle of righteousness, holiness, and hygiene which they set forth. Before we pray, bear it in mind that leprosy is a portrait of sin. At first, it shows only as a small stain. It, it contaminates human beings. It is contagious. It is terminal. It separates one from God and people. It causes death, but there is hope for sinners today. This morning, as you come to sinner, come to Jesus, and only Jesus can heal. It is very certain. If you, as you come today, you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Shall we rise up on our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer? Holy Father, we thank you, we bless you, we appreciate you for your word that we have heard this morning. We pray that this word will bear fruit in every heart in Jesus' name. For all sinners today, backsliders today that have heard your word, there will be